Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Coffee with Carl. I'm your host, Carl Zellner. I'm one of the attorneys with Anderson Business Advisors, and this is our sort of frequently asked question uh, channel on YouTube here. Uh, Today, I want to talk a little bit about legal formalities. This tends to come across quite a bit when we're talking about uh, working within our entity structure, the type of agreements we have internally versus the type of agreements we have externally or when we're dealing with third parties. Uh, Best titling in the picture I could find was called legal formalities, so we'll use that one. Uh, When we work inside of our business structure, our contracts and our business dealings, number one, they do have to be formalized. Number two is they do need to be arm's length transactions. We need to make sure if we want them to hold up, they're treated like we're working from business to business. However, there is a slight distinction in that if I'm dealing with myself or the entities I control, then I'm not so worried. And this sound is going to sound kind of silly, but I am not so worried about me taking advantage of me or me defrauding me or some other of the issues that can happen when you're working with outside parties or third parties or con- and, you know, specifically contractors, things like that. So you'll notice a lot of times that when we set up business entities or have uh, template agreements for use within your entity structure, they're going to be highly stripped down and simplified simply because they don't require that there should be every single piece of legal information or all sorts or all the different clauses we would expect to see in contracts when I get to have control over both sides of the deal or you do in, in your, in your case. Uh, This, this question comes up every once in a while because we will get um, different clients who will submit document reviews, reviewing documents or contracts that are going to be between one of their entities and another one of their entities. Say, for example, when we're using the master lease structure in our Airbnb scenarios where we're creating a lease between two of our entities, so that it, but it allows for subleasing, different items like that. So this is more of just a if you see something that's meant to work within your business structure or even say like a simple promissory note or something like that, most times when you're dealing with you, it's going to be more simple, more stripped down, more lenient on what we expect to see versus when I'm working with an outside party and I really need to protect myself on all sides. It would be nice if we lived in a world where a handshake was still enough to get a deal done, but even if you function because I tend to work this way, or I tend to think this way as well, even though you function on that level of commitment, integrity, and honesty, you don't know necessarily everybody you deal with is going to, and sometimes you don't find out till it's too late. So just as a reminder, remember when you're dealing with outside parties, normally your documents are going to be more substantial in nature, meaning addressing more issues internally, not quite so important, but they still do need to have the formalities and the arm's length type of transaction if you want those documents to be legally enforceable as well as hold up under scrutiny, say, if you were to be sued. Uh, And we really want to protect that corporate veil or that entity veil in that scenario. So we do have the level that you're looking for even in between your own entities, but don't be afraid if all of a sudden you're, there's you know a severability clause that may not be included in one of your contracts between your two entities, or say there's not a um, mandatory arbitration or arbitration agreement or something attached with those documents. So... I think that covers it for sort of addressing a very basic issue, but one that's crucial to cover because we don't want you to think that there's some difference or some lack of substantive nature of the documents that you're doing between your entities, but there is an explanation for why they tend to be a bit more simple in that, like I said, a little bit silly before, we don't expect you to injure you or sue yourself uh, (laughs) in the near future or ever, hopefully. So this is, uh, that about wraps it up for this episode of Coffee with Carl. As always, thanks for joining. Uh, I can't wait to see y'all on the next episode, uh, as well as I believe we're going to start now including a link where you can actually suggest topics if you'd like me to cover some. i uh, got a plenty of questions to go through still, but always happy to answer questions that are front of mind. As always, if you're an Anderson client, 
please feel free to get a hold of us anytime. Uh, if you're not an Anderson client but considering it, please always take advantage of the free consult so you can at least get your wealth planning blueprint in place and we can show you sort of how we would be doing things and the why and how behind what we do. I look forward to seeing all of you at one of our upcoming classes. Once again, you can check the website for those classes. Until next time, this is Coffee with Carl. Had a great time being with you today.